Uh, my name is Christian Carmino. I work here with Anatomaz. I'm very happy to be here with Hofstra University. Uh, we're honored to play an integral role here in uh, helping the health science program here deliver the utmost of uh, unprecedented learning experiences for students preparing to enter the healthcare professions. So what we have here is just a quick example of some of the power and the capability of this technology that we're so lucky to have here at Hofstra. Uh, what I have here open is one of our cadavers, uh, one of the four that are present in the anatomized table. And uh, this particular cadaver came to us through the Visible Korean Project. And if you're unfamiliar with the Visible Korean Project, these bodies were cryogenically frozen at the time of their death um, and then imaged thousands of times after they were sliced in order to produce some of the most authentic and accurate digital anatomy data that you could get access to today. So Vicky here, she was actually only 26 years old when she passed away due to some complications with gastric cancer. So what I'm going to do here is show you guys some of the pathology that we can explore in this digital format. So I'm going to make an incision here from the top, right down the center of Vicky's torso, tap on the side that I'd like to remove. And now we can see a beautiful sagittal slice here of the anatomy. Using common touch gestures, we're able to explore different planes and different visualizations, get a very strong understanding of the topography and the true spatial relationships and authentic coloration of the tissue here in Vicky. Now, if I stop slowly here and zoom in on her cervical spine, we can actually take a look at some of the pathology that I'm mentioning here. So I'm gonna use one of my tools here to highlight a region up here in her cervical spine. And we'll also direct your attention to that region with an arrow here. You can see that the cancer in her spine actually metastasized and created a pinch in her brainstem and a compression fracture in her T1, T2 vertebral space. So what we can do here is really explore the pathology of real human beings in a digital format. Now, what I also wanna show you guys is the physiological capabilities of the table. So we're gonna minimize here and bring up one of our latest additions to the anatomized table, which is our beating heart. So nothing you see here is artistically rendered. This is all the real authentic digitized human anatomy. So if you're looking for the best possible way to visualize and engage with this anatomy, understand the 3D relationships between different structures, this is the place to be. As you can see here, we've simulated the beating heart and linked it to an electrocardiogram. So you can not only visualize the electrophysiology of the heart and the conduction system, but also see how it relates to common practices like uh, telemetry and ECG readings. From here, of course, we can make adjustments to peel back some of the chambers of the heart. So now you can very clearly see the automaticity of the cardiac cells conducting an impulse, traveling down the appropriate nodes into the ventricles to then innervate the heart. Now, this is just one of the physiology tools that are capable uh, that the table houses. Um, we have several others, including nerve pathways. Um, let's see what else we have here to show you guys. Nerve pathways, uh, simulated procedures, sonography, um, and like I said, different, different pathways through different drugs and how they're absorbed through the body. Now, we also have a high resolution library as well, where we actually went back in and re-imaged a lot of the cadavers to where we're able to provide an ultra high resolution rendition of the anatomy here. Several different tools allow us to explore the anatomy in, in unique ways that you just wouldn't have access to in a typical cadaver lab or even using traditional methods like flat colored models or textbooks. For example, our blood flow tool will actually animate the flow of blood either two away from the heart, depending on the vessel you select. And we can also actually annotate those vessels as well. So we have a nice good understanding of what vessels we're talking about, the direction of the blood that's traveling. And of course that applies to any vessel we'd like to select. As you can see, selecting an artery network through the brain has highlighted quite a few different structures. Now, a lot of these are within the skull. So what we can do is take our removal tool and we can start taking away some of these structures, exposing the brain. Now we can really get a good idea 
of those blood vessels flowing through the heart, or flowing through the brain rather. So you can see kind of those blood vessels entering the circle of Willis and just the level of detail and the sharpness of this ultra high quality rendition of the head and neck. Now what the table is also capable of doing inherently is taking any CT scan or any MRI scan and rendering it into 3D. So what we've done here at Anatomage is curated a case library with over 2000 different clinical and pathological cases for you guys to explore as students and to teach to as educators. Now, one of my favorites that I would like to show you guys is of a glioblastoma here. So let me bring that up. And now the beauty of the table is even with a 2000 plus case library, uh, different cases, the technology allows you to actually import your own cases and effectively expand your own case library. So what I can do here is split the table in half. And now what we're gonna see on the right side is a typical view of an MRI. This is what most radiologists are familiar with, a grayscale axial top-down view of the scan. So I'm just scrolling through it here, as you can see with my fingers, and we'll stop right here in the middle and you can see that large gray mass, which is the tumor. Now this MRI came into the anatomized table just the way you see it in this grayscale fashion. And our table has been able to render it into this 3D model that you see. Now what I'm about to show you is actually something very similar to what Mayo Clinic down in Jacksonville, Florida is doing with this technology, where they were actually able to scan one of their neurology patients in, plan the operation as surgeons around the table using the table's technology and actually shave uh, up to five hours off of the operation time, which is tremendous in terms of recovery, amongst other things. So I'm going to use my tools here now to manipulate the 3D rendering, and we're going to change the coloration of it so we can see things a little better. So now what we're going from something we're used to, a grayscale axial image of a tumor, to a full-blown three-dimensional rendition of this tumor. And of course, we can zoom in, adjust our contrast, and really get a strong understanding of just how big this tumor is, or some of the structures that it's impacting locally in the brain. Now, we can always take it a step further and use our dissection tool and trace out the tumor. And now we've isolated the tumor completely. From here, we can do things like measurements, area measurements, circumferential measurements, we can even superimpose the patient's face back onto the table. So now, once again, we're going from grayscale axial view to a full blown three dimensional view that gives us a much stronger understanding from a clinical perspective, but also from a learning perspective, really understanding how this tumor affects and where it sits in the brain. Now, the table has additional power to 3D print anything that you see on the table. So we can capture this image and export it to a 3D printable file, and you can actually have a physical copy of a clinical case. Now, I mentioned the power of the table and its capabilities. You can always expand your own case library with the student scans as well. And what that means is, you know, as students, if you want to come in and you have access to your own MRI or CT scan, you can import it into the table and effectively manipulate your own anatomy in three dimensions here at Hofstra in this anatomized lab. And then of course, if you choose to do so, perhaps 3D print it and have your own souvenir. But this is just one case uh, of, of thousands that we have. Uh, we even have a lot of animal scans too, dogs, cats, frogs, you name it, we have dozens of those. Um, but really the, the power of the table comes from the ability to not only engage with the anatomy, but to really visualize in ultra high quality, a lot of these structures. And again, the spatial relationships and how they interact with each other. So it's my hope that you guys recognize the power of this virtual anatomy lab here at Hofstra and that you choose to take advantage of it and you know, adopt what is, in an anatomized opinion, the, the highest level of learning that you could possibly achieve here in the health sciences. So once again, Hofstra and everyone else here at Zoom, thank you very much for having me. And thank you very much for adopting an Anatomy technology.